In a recent article, Jorge Manrubio actually published something about what's coming new in Turbo 8, and it's actually been out a while. It's in October. I'm recording this in December, but I wanted to go a little deeper after looking in and watching his talk at Rails World and also just reading this article again after watching that talk, going deeper into why and how they're adding this thing called morphing to Turbo 8. And it's in a beta at this point. So we've got a beta for both the Turbo Rails gem and the Turbo NPM package. So you'll need to actually add those independently, but also there'll be the beta version that allows what we're going to do in this little guide to be possible at this point in this recording. So in the future, if you're watching this, I'm assuming this will already be out. So you won't have to go through some of the loopholes of downloading a beta. Uh, it should just be automatic. With all that said, the real reason this has become a problem and something that they brought to the new framework is they are building a calendar product, Jason Fried announced on Twitter, about bringing a new cal calendar component to Hey, their email service. Um, I'm assuming it's going to become a full like Google replacement at some point, uh, like Gmail does. You know, they have the whole suite of products. Um, my guess is the calendar component is going to be, you know, the precursor to getting even more people on board, which is cool to see. With a calendar, as you probably know, there comes many intricacies in building something as such. There's dates, times, uh, crazy amounts of UI, and then you need to kind of account for positioning things relative to the time they're created in a calendar format. So it could be down to the minute. So you have to think of in terms of how many variations things could change at any given moment. So morphing is kind of the answer to that problem. Um, he describes it in his talk, which I recommend you walk, watch before doing any of this it kind of gives you more of a, a foundational approach of what, what's the intention behind it. But today we use turbo, um, turbo frames, turbo actions to, you know, essentially updates parts of a view in a page. And instead of doing that, the morphing approach would take it a step further and just minimize the amount of tags and frames you would need to add your pages and just do it on the whole DOM. So the idea of the underlying framework for morphing is something called morph DOM. And I think they ended up using one called idiomorph, which is kind of like those inspired by that, but also just a little more simpler for what everything they were looking for. I don't, I haven't have no experience with either to start coming to this, but it is something that um, has really piqued my interest because of the simplicity around it all. So instead of adding these tags to our views all the time, we're able to essentially add a, th a helper method in our model and then stream updates like normal using turbo and then things just kind of work and it it's pretty sweet so i want to do a little quick guide um, recommend reading this blog post and again that talk here i'll link to this in the article that i'm going to post this on all right so what i want to do is create a new app and i've got a console below and i'm going to create a rails new and for this one to save some time i'm not going to use some of my own stuff i'm just going to use the tailwind css plugin um, it kind of comes with some defaults with regard to UI. So I'll get that. We'll call this one blog morphing or something like that. It'll be a simple blog we'll build with rails, but the idea is we need to add some characteristics that make it work with morphing a little bit better. So just a basic blog, I'm going to use ES build simply because I don't really like import maps. So you don't have to use this. I'm just doing it because I'm used to ES build syntax and all the configuration around it. So I'll run this and create the new app. Okay, so I've seeded into the, our app. It's called Blog Morphing. Terrible name, but just one I'm going with for the moment. We want to add the sail, Tailwind CSS uh, gem. So I'm going to do a bundle, add Tailwind CSS Rails. Should go fetch that and install the gem. Then we want to run the installer. So Rails Tailwind CSS install. Now you can install Tailwind on the fly from the new app. I'm I'm just doing it this way because it. It's pretty much how I did it when I started. So I'm going to go conflict. Uh, yes, we're going to overwrite. Okay. So with that done, we need to try to boot the app. See what we got in terms of getting it previewable. You will notice that it's on localhost 5,000. So I'm going to go ahead and go to that one. Set a three. Okay. That gives us the infinite uh, Rails logo at the beginning with our versions. I need to upgrade 
to a new version of Ruby pretty soon, I think. Next, we'll install Turbo. And this is important because we need to install the beta. So Turbo comes by default with Rails when you install it, but you will notice the version is 122 or something at this point. So it needs to be updated to include, or it's 1.5, excuse me. So the releases, you'll see there are beta versions. If you go up to there, you'll see the V2 beta. So to install a beta, you need to comma separate the gem here and then add a a squiggly arrow thing. I forget what they're called, but <laughs> that and then 2.0.0-beta.2. Okay, now if we run that, we should hopefully see it go fetch the beta version. When we install it, here it is right there. It looks like it worked. So one thing I forgot when I was going through this myself is to consider the uh, yarn package as well. So we need to make sure that's installed. So yarn add hot wired and then it will be turbo and then you'll say at sign eight zero point zero point dash beta dot two should go fetch that okay great now we have the dependencies in the app we're able to go and create the resources at this point so i'm going to just scaffold out a simple blog we're going to have a user model and a, po a post model i'm not going to go through all the authentication that you might do with something like devise but i will just show just for demo purposes how a user will essentially belong to or a user will be referenced on the blog itself or the post i should say so rails generate scaffold posts and we'll just get a title and content will be text and i'll say user references we don't have user yet but i'm going to add it next so that gives us uh as you can see with tailwind install it generates our pre sort of designed views saves time it's nothing fancy but it is something that's already in place so we don't have to worry about it for this demo and then i'll do the user so generate user and then we'll just say name email it's nothing fancy oh i need to add scaffold there nothing fancy whatsoever um you would probably need to run your own authentication if you continue this app but uh, i'm not going to do that for this guide and then let's create a user just so we have one in the database so i'll do a console rails console and then say user dot create and name will be andy email Andy at webcrunch.com. Oops, I'll just close that there. Uh, okay, we need to um, migrate first. All right, so let's go back and run Rails console and do that again. User.create name Andy, email Andy at webcrunch.com. All right inserts in the database very cool already good if we look into our schema you'll see it's extremely simple if we go in the database we could see we have a post table the user id reference and an index and then also our users table so we should be all set there uh, one thing we need to do is make sure our models are up to spec so we've got post belongs to the user which is good and the user should have many posts great so we'll save that down and I will go and essentially just update our views a bit. Um, I want to make sure our post form is on the index of our view here. We can boot our Rails app. And actually, first, before I do that, I'll go to our routes and make the root posts index. You can see it added resources, users, and posts for us when we did the migration. Here's the plain Jane Tailwind setup, but nothing fancy, but it works OK. Then we'll just render our form in this case. So I'm going to say um, posts form, and then we'll say posts, and just get a new instance of post pass through to it. That should render the form on the index, which is kind of what I want, just to give it almost like a Twitter feel, even though it's very, very t like not Twitter <laughs> or X as they call it now. Okay, so then we will actually remove the user ID. And on the controller, just being extremely quick with this, I'm going to do a merge of the current user. So merge, normally you do like current user here, but since we only have the one that I'm gonna worry about, 
I'm just gonna pass first there. So we save that. Okay, so with that done, we've essentially made our, you know, post, I'll just say first post, test post content, create. All right, seems to work. There it lists itself. We can go edit it. There's the editing form. So our scaffold's working, it's in working order. Um, I'm gonna remove this button just so it's out of the way. Don't really need it with the form here now. That's kind of just some maintenance and general stuff to get out of the way to make the app function similarly to what we want. Now we need to think about how adding the morph concept to the blog. So traditionally, if you wanted to update some of this stuff in place, like say editing and then render the form here, you need to wrap that entire instance of your post, say in the foreshell here with a turbo frame tag um, and then stream updates to that specific thing. But instead we're gonna go and add a few things that make all that not necessary. So I'll start first in our layout where we add a new tag. That's essentially a meta tag that's gonna do a couple things. Uh, if you go back to the article, you'll see it in the article where it adds these two. We're gonna have morph and um, I believe it's just the morph one that gets added on the turbo refresh concept. So there's of course a, a built-in with the new turbo um, beta version of the gym. We can add this turbo refreshes with tag and we'll say method morph and then scroll will preserve, which is a big reason they wanted to add it. So a lot of the idiom idiomorph uh, library Features essentially means the page won't jump out of context when a element is updated or streamed updates. Uh, instead, it's just kind of like static. It just feels natural and almost really smooth when things change in the app. So it's kind of neat to see. Uh, and then we'll use the underlying action cable streaming function stuff to update things on the fly using that. That's a piece of the puzzle is to make sure you have that in the app. I almost assume this might be shipping with rails before long, just this tag. We'll see. Uh, and then we'll go into the post model and there's a new method we'll be adding called broadcast refreshes broadcast refreshes. I think it's, it's plural. So we'll add that. And then let's first demo this on our sh uh, post show view just to get it, make it really simple. One thing we need to add to the view that's kind of what we used to do if you wanted to stream updates is a turbo stream from, and then we'll pass the instance of post to that. So now on the show view, we can see updates on the fly and things just kind of work. So what I'll do is open two browsers. I've got a, a cognito one here and then the normal one over here. I'll edit post, add a couple differences here. With any luck, you'll see it just automatically update over here. So that's pretty sweet. It's automatically doing that. No jumps, nothing like that. So pretty nice. This stuff updates here too. Okay, so that's the simple uh, approach, single instance of a post. Let's go back and think about how to do this as a collection. It's a little thing that I don't love about it, but you need to have some sort of association involved to make this work for collections. And what that means essentially is like having this association that we built, we're able to stream updates relative to a change that happens to the post. So what that essentially means is that we need to add this little bit of details. It says touch true, which in theory, all this does is updates the timestamp when a post changes. So on a post commit of some type, create, update, destroy, all those, um, the user timestamp would update. So that allows us to you know, catch those changes and actually respond accordingly. Uh, it's a little confusing, but it is one thing that's kind of necessary for this to work. Um, but I would honestly trade this for all the turbo frame tags that we would need to otherwise use. So under the user, we'll have as many posts and we'll add the broadcasts refreshes as well. That allows us to stream updates to that specific user. So assuming the user's signed in, maybe their posts on the index are gonna be relative to their posts, assuming they created them. So what I'll do is on our index here, I'm gonna just have the user be user first for demo purposes. And then we'll say user.posts will be that query 
that essentially responds to that specific user's post. So on the index, in that case, it all updates to show just my posts if I'm that user, if that makes sense. Let's get a couple of posts here. Okay, with that said, now we need to add the streaming capability on this post. So we'll just say turbo stream from user. And we'll I'll put that that enters that essentially injects a turbo stream tag into the page. So if we look in the index and in the view source, you'll see this little invented tag that gets added. That's essentially what's going to be responsible for casting the updates and listening for changes. So what we'll do is recreate what we just did over in a private window. As I update post, you should see the same changes update over here. So now we've got all this real time stuff happening without any turbo frame tags, which I think is beautiful. See it update over here. No real page refreshes, but it is kind of the goal is to get closer to that real page refresh as opposed to something like a turbo stream update. There's just plenty of reasoning why you would need less of the turbo frame tags going this approach. It's just super simple and easy. So and we'll delete that one and watch over here. It just goes away as well. So I love seeing all this real time stuff without touching JavaScript at all. It's kind of a neat thing I would never thought could be created. <laughs> but it's cool to see. So this is all coming to Turbo 8 very soon. Uh, I predict it coming out maybe post Christmas sometime, maybe in the new year, we'll see. But I'm excited to play with it and keep keep that going. Ultimately write less code, which is gonna be way more powerful. And I think the new default uh, stance of a Rails app is gonna change a huge amount over the next year or so. So it's exciting to see. Hopefully this is helpful. If you have questions or feedback, let me know. I'm gonna kind of make this guide of tutorial as well. So if you look on the website, you'll see it there. I'll link to that in the description below. All right, thanks for watching. Peace.